Hello, my lovely Sagittarius. Welcome to your moon reading. This is a full moon reading, actually. So this is just a general reading. Please do take what resonates and take the rest with a grain. Also, if you do enjoy this content, please do like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell, all that other great stuff. It's completely free, but it does help my channel and I would appreciate it very much. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get in here and see what the full moon is doing for you. Uh, I know it's making people around me kind of crazy. <laughs> Reckless drivers and yelling people and whatnot. So let's see what we've got going for you, okay? We're gonna do a seven card moon circle. And I hope you're enjoying your full moon this weekend. So let's see, the first position is what you're facing. Second position is what got you into that. Third position is like a challenge card in typical tarot, and then it's what's keeping you in that. The fourth position is your optimal outcome if you follow the fifth, sixth, and seventh positions. So don't worry if you can't see it. We'll go ahead and clarify each one as we go along. But right now, it looks like you are facing action, okay? And if you look at this card, it's actually a beautiful action. It's like a ballerina dancing. So it's a very beautiful action. So I do feel like you are taking a chance at something where you are making a change for the better, okay? And I think this is something that I'm seeing very common throughout our readings, okay? But not just throughout the readings, I'm hearing this, I'm seeing this throughout the way people are feeling, thinking, and a lot of this is uh, to do with the shift into Aquarius with Jupiter. Um, people are really starting to want more for themselves, right? They're feeling like, you know what, I've spent way too long give, give, giving and not taking back anything for myself or getting anything in return, you know, and enough's enough. You know, I want to kind of be able to take my own joy, you know, have my own creative license, do things for myself for once. And I think you are kind of at that position, right? I think you're at the, if you aren't already in the process of taking action, you are very much on the cusp, right? Where you are here saying, now's the time, I'm ready, okay? It's, I'm not waiting a single second longer, I am ready to make a move. Either I'm done with this job that I feel is just not serving me anymore, it's dead end for me, I'm sick and tired of it, or I'm over this relationship that is just draining me dry and giving me nothing in return. You know, I'm just, this, this family member is toxic that I'm around and I put up with it for X amount of years, months, whatever, because they were family and I felt like that's what you're supposed to do, but now I realize that a toxic person is a toxic person. and being family doesn't excuse them, right? So I'm done, right? Whatever it may be, okay? But what got you into this was peace, okay? And you're like, how does peace cause trouble, right? Well, peace can cause some serious trouble if you let yourself allow keeping the peace to go too far. So when you are letting things go by, okay? You are letting things um, happen that shouldn't and you're just letting it slide, letting it slide, letting it slide to keep the peace, okay? Again, that can happen with family, especially, right? Oh, they're family, you gotta kinda let it go. No, you don't, right? A toxic person is a toxic person. Sometimes you have to cut them off whether they're family or not, okay? A toxic work environment, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, I shouldn't say anything. It's just gonna cause more drama than it's worth, right? It's just gonna rock a boat that's gonna cause more trouble and it's not gonna get me anything in the end. Well, keeping the peace sometimes, sweeping things under the rug sometimes just allows it to get worse. It allows people to know I can take, I can just keep doing what I'm doing to this person. I can just keep taking advantage of this person, right? It's kind of like, you know, if somebody knows they can get away with something, what's to stop them from doing it over and over and over, right? Because you're not doing anything about it. Well, you're not doing anything about it because you think you're trying to keep the peace, but really all you're doing is letting them know that it's okay. Their actions are okay. Okay, and so it's there's, there's a finite line, right? There's a fine line, it's very fine, right? Between keeping the peace and getting walked all over. And I think you're starting to see that maybe some people have crossed that line and you're done with it, right? So what's keeping you in this is release, right? It's hard to release for any of us, right? It's so hard to let go. 
that's just human nature. Even when somebody's been the biggest jerk in the world to us, hard to let go. If it's a job we really, really are used to having and we need, even if it's toxic, we're like, it's hard to let go. It can be hard to let go because there are a lot of really good people there that we want to stay with. But it could also just be hard to let go because it's consistent. It's paid the bills. There's a logistical pro, you know, side to that. You know, but if it's an emotional situation, it's hard to let go of a person that you have been with for a very long time, even when you know that they're not healthy for you. Okay, because our minds are kind of like um, defense mechanisms for us, right? So what do they do? They go into a mode where when we look back and we think about those times in our life, we block out a lot of the struggle. We block out a lot of the trauma and we remember the good times, right? If you think back to those relationships, you're like, oh, I remember this good time and that good time and this good time and that good time. Those may have been the only good times out of a 15 year relationship, right? But your brain remembers those to save itself from focusing on the 99% of the time that it was under stress, stress, trauma, right? So that's why it's hard to release because you, you want to remember the good, right? So anytime you're having to say, I'm done with a situation, I'm done with being treated like crap, I'm done with giving and not being able to receive, I'm done with any of this, it's hard, okay? It is a hard decision to make, not just from an emotional standpoint, but a lot of times from a logistical standpoint. I mean, it could mean divorces. It could mean separations. It could mean, you know, finding new jobs. It could mean finding new homes. It could really logistically mean a lot. It takes a lot when you split, especially nowadays where just about everybody has to cohabitate just to make ends meet, right? I mean, people are living together more than ever, you know, whether they're married or not, just to survive and share bills, right? So you could break up with a, a significant other that you've only been dating for six months, but in a practicality reason, you've lived, you know, moved in together. And now it's like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna pay the bills though, if we split? I don't make enough money to pay my own bills. They don't make enough money to pay all of their own bills if we went and had to buy or get our own places, our own utilities, our own cell phones, our own whatever, you know, because you may be on a shared plan. You may have one vehicle you share and drive, you know, together, you know, because this, that's the nature of our, our economy right now, unfortunately, right? So there's a lot to release, you know, and that makes it very much more difficult nowadays, right? Keeps that, keeps you there, keeps you there longer than you should it makes you put up with a lot more than you should, okay? I get that. It's always easier said than done to let go, okay? But your optimal outcome is power. And power in this specific deck is about you taking back the power of everything that's in your control, okay? And that doesn't just mean like your sovereignty, which is like my authority, right? It's about your power, right? It's about I'm taking back the control of what I want in my life, right? Whether it's this person in my life, whether it's where I live in my life, whether it's this job in my life, it's the power of my decisions, my life, what I want around me, who I want around me, what energy exchange I want around me, because your energy is your largest commodity, right? And if you are letting someone suck your energy dry all the time, what have you got left, right? You're exhausted every day. Somebody is sucking you dry from your energy reserves, right? So this is going to be your optimal outcome. And it, I think you're definitely going to get there. But how do you get there, right? You're like, lady, just tell me, right? Well, of course. The first thing is your path. You have to decide what path you want to take. You have to plan it, right? If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. That's something that I've always been told my whole life, right? And it's, it's true, right? I mean, you can't plan for everything. Let's be honest, you can't. The first time you do, they say, if you want to make, if you want to make God laugh, make a plan, right? That's true. That's true too. But you can plan to an extent, right? You can try to take all of the necessary steps to make it the best possible outcome, right? The best possible chance to happen. So this is where you kind of decide what you want your life to look like and kind of start putting those things into place. So at least let's say the logistical part becomes more of a reality, more of a plausible 
possibility, right? So if your plan is like, I want to move out, I want to find a new job, you can start putting out resumes, right? You can start looking for jobs. You can start looking for housing you can afford. Start putting out feelers for jobs. Start putting out feelers for housing. Start putting out feelers for roommates, best friends that might have a spare couch you can stay on for a while while you get on your feet. Whatever it may be that is going to help you get to this point, right? That is where you want to ultimately be, right? Start creating that plan, that logistical plan, right? Because lo logistics are a big part of what keeps us tied to things a lot of times, right? So that's the first thing you need to do. Decide where you want to go and what's the best path of least resistance to get there, okay? Because the reality is we live in a physical reality world based on, you know, tangible objects, right? <laughs> so, I mean, we have to be logical about how we go about things. That's that's the truth. I mean, we can't just walk off a job, walk out of a house and be like, I'll be fine. I've got no money. I've got no place to live. I've got no money. I got no car. I got no whatever. And there you are, whatever that song was, you know what I mean? Like, okay. So the next step is darkness. And this card is a fantastic card. I love this card, okay? Because this card, if you see a little bunny in the corner, they are hidden in the darkness. This card is all about watching and learning from a distance, right? This card is about, you know what, finding out what people are about, what people think, what people do, who people really are, from a distance, okay? Because the bottom line is you wanna go for a new job, okay? You go to that interview. Are they gonna tell you this is the crappiest place you're ever gonna work? Wanna work here? No. You go meet somebody new, you wanna date? Are they gonna go on that first date and go, hey, you should absolutely date me a second time. I'm a narcissistic pig, it's gonna be fantastic. I'm gonna groom you and then I'm gonna drop the bomb and treat you like crap. You're gonna love it, no. That's just not what people do. They tell you what you want to hear, right? They don't They don't tell you. It's not like, you know, whatever that movie was that everybody told the truth. I can't even remember. Was that Shallow How? I don't remember which movie it is. But you know what I'm talking about, right? They don't do that, right? But in this, this is like, this is where you hide and you watch, right? If it's somebody you're interested in dating, a new person, okay? You watch that person. You see how they treat their family, their friends their ex when you're not looking, right? You find out what is that person really like, not what they're telling you they're like, not what they want you to believe they're like, but what are they really like when they don't think anybody's watching? Because that's character, right? That's what their moral and ethical person is, what they are when they don't think anybody sees them, right? Okay, if that job you really want, but you wanna know what's it really like before I dive in, you know what, there's places online where you can go that have anonymous employees putting out reviews. Go read those, right? Go ask somebody who maybe works there. Honestly, you know, would you work there again? You know, those kinds of things. Find out, see, are people looking happy from there? Do they seem to be happy or are they working, are they coming out of that office at 7.30 at night, dragging tail, feeling like they're almost in tears and seeing their family almost not, right? Is that, see what I'm saying? That's what this little bunny's doing. He's hiding in the darkness and the shadows. He's checking things out. He's learning everything he needs to know without asking a single question. And that's what you need to do because that's how you find the right information so that you don't ever have to get in a position where you have to keep quiet and keep taking it and smooth things over to keep the peace because you already know you're in a position that is peaceful, right? Before you even get into it, smart. And the last thing is stay hungry. You have to stay hungry. You cannot let yourself get frustrated, right? We all tend to want to get out there and then expect everything to fall right in place immediately. And when it doesn't, the first thing we want to do is run back, right? That is human nature. It's human nature. Panic and run back, right? I mean, who doesn't want to run home and put their head under the covers when something goes wrong? Who doesn't want to go, adulting sucks. I want to go home and let mommy and daddy take care of me. We all do, right? 
I mean, we all have those moments. We, everybody has those moments. That's human nature, right? So when you leave a situation, a job that was, you know, paying the bills, may have sucked, may have been taking you for granted, but then you get out there and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm really struggling to find a job now. I should have stayed where I was. I should have stayed where I was. No, you shouldn't have. It was draining your energy. You know what? You made a plan to put some money back or to do whatever. If you did this properly, just stay hungry. It's coming. Keep, keep going at it. You'll find the right job soon. And you won't have to be as concerned because you did this step, remember? You made a logistical plan. You have some money put back. You've already got feelers out there on 15 jobs. You're just waiting. You're just staying hungry and waiting for more and more and pushing it, right? Making phone calls, do what you need to do. And if it's leaving a person and now you're like, no, I'm alone and I need, I'm gonna run back to that person. No, you're not. That person was sucking your energy. You're not gonna be alone for long, stay hungry. As your emotional and emotional and physical and all of your presence is rising, your energy levels are rising. People are taking note, they're seeing that, right? And they will rise. As you're getting out of a bad situation and into better ones, you're just gonna naturally become more charismatic, more emotionally charged uh, energetically with your energy. And that exchange is going to come in a way that's gonna make other people want to share their energy with you of that higher level, right? So you're going to find a higher level, better match. That's why this action that you're taking to get out of a situation you're not thrilled with is a beautiful action, okay? And when you do that, that's why it's going to end in you having the power back in your court, the ball back in your court, where you get to say, I get to pick the people I want around me whether it be at work or at home or friends or family, because now everybody wants to be around me really, because I'm not that same person I was. I'm not that person who is beat down, exhausted, tired, just trying to make it through the day, just trying to keep the peace. I'm that person who is happy, excited. I don't have to just try to keep the peace because I already have peace. I went into a situation that I knew before I went in was already a good situation because I checked. I. I had the means, the I had the means and the opportunity to wait for the right situation because I planned ahead. I'm smart. And then I stayed hungry for the proper situation, the person or the situation that matched my energy. So that when I found exactly what I wanted, I was in my I was in my perfect, you know, my Mecca, my perfect scene, my, my ultimate power zone, right? And that's exactly what you're going to do. So I think everything's going to work out beautifully for you. I think the first step here that you've decided you deserve more is number one, you're already hitting the hitting the ground running with that. And if you're not already taking the action, the fact that you have decided you're going to, if you follow through with that is going to be brilliant and it's going to work out perfect for you. But remember, you have to follow the steps. Do not skip this step. Okay. Because if you do, when you skip that step, if you haven't logistically come up with plans in place and those plans don't have to be, you know, oh, I'm, how am I going to hoard back a bunch of money? How am I going to do this? Sometimes this could just be asking friends for help. You know, maybe going home for a while to your family, whatever it may be. It doesn't have to be that you have to be sitting on cash flow, piles of whatever. You know, that's not the case necessarily. You know, there are other ways to make sure that you're logistically okay, right? Be creative. But the point is, if you skip this step and things take just a little longer than you're expecting, you're going to get to this point. And if it's taking too long, you're gonna to tend to wanna to not stay hungry. You're gonna to want to revert back. You're gonna to wanna to go, oh, I, bet, I, I messed up, I messed up. And, and then that's, it's all gonna go downhill. It's gonna fall. Because let me tell you something, you go back at that point, they got gotcha. you. They know, first of all, they think they're right, right? That's the worst. And second of all, they're gonna go, I knew you'd come running back. And they know you'll never go again because you, you failed. To them, you failed. So don't let them have that satisfaction, no matter what. Make sure that you put your sound plan in place before you start watching what you're wanting, 
and then going for what you're wanting full bore, right? You got this, okay? So hopefully this worked out for you. Hopefully it resonated with you. If it did, please do like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell. And I hope everything is looking lovely for you on this full moon and you have a great weekend. Bye.